welcome to this episode of Front Runner 2020. And now we come to the time of the program where we check in with Dave Bonham. He's the Deputy Campaign Manager at Alan Cohen for Houston City Council. Dave helps us connect each week's material with the activities of an actual campaign. Dave, I have some questions for you on this topic, and I know this is one of your specialties. You're out there running a canvassing campaign right now. So let's just get, well, first of all, let me welcome you and say hello. I'm sorry for being so rude. How are you, Dave? Hey, Ron. It's, it's going well. No, it's always a pleasure to be on. Thanks. I'm just so mission focused right now. So <laughs> let's just jump right into it. What timeline do you recommend for the use of walking in a campaign? Well, I think you really have to figure out what is going to be the purpose of your walk program. Um, you know, not to give too much away for our campaign, but you, you, you have different um, focuses in a walk campaign. It's either going to be an ID, uh, which is going to be identifying your voters, and that's going to be weeding out your bad data, whether they're, they've moved, um, whether, you know, whatever, and that was, you know, mentioned. Um, second type is you're going to be your persuasion, and third is going to be your GOTV, which is get out the vote. So it all depends on how many resources you have, what type of campaign you're going for, and really what your ultimate goal is. And so we started walking in August because we had that luxury, because we wanted to stay out of the heat. We're going to shift into a persuasion campaign here in a little bit, and then we're going to be knocking on uh, doors for a GOTV. So it really, really just depends on the map. And I know that doesn't answer your question, but... I really can't, to be honest. <laughs> well, you answered uh, a, a sort of another aspect of it that I had was really you're using it for all three stages of yes. the campaign, uh, classical yes, exactly. campaigns. Yeah. Exactly. Understood. Okay, here's my other question, and that is how do the telephone calls made by your volunteers at the campaign office – work with the walking program? Well, sure, yeah, that's a great question. And let me tie it back to your first question, as in the timeline. You should never think about these things independent of each other. Everything needs to be layered in, working harmoniously, and together towards a common goal. Um, our phones right now are supplementing our ID program. And you've got to realize that you can call some people and not be able to walk them and vice versa. You also may have good data on someone's phone number and not their address. They may have moved. People transfer their numbers, and it's true vice versa. So I don't know how to answer that question that well, but realize you know, there are certain types of people who are going to answer their phone more often than not. You can look at older demographics. You can look at more stable uh, neighborhoods. You can look at residents rather uh, with homes rather than apartments. Um, so those are all things to consider. But once again, don't ever isolate your programs. They all need to be working together towards a common goal. Okay. Okay. Let me ask then or give you an opportunity to add information or supplement what was in our program this week. Is there anything that you'd like to add? And then just go ahead and transition into your closing comments from there. Sure, no, absolutely. I, I really liked what Sean said about a field program. It's ultimately about making your resources more efficient. Um, on that note, you can make your walk program more efficient. I always, I have a, um, a one-page document, and Ron, I apologize, I should have sent this to you, and y'all could have talked about it and made fun of me because <laughs> I'm not there live to comment. But um, <laughs> there, there, there is a one-page document I always use with my block walkers, um, and just to go over some of the key things um, that make a block walk successful. I tell them, don't spend any more than three minutes per door. Um, no matter if someone loves a candidate, hates a candidate, or needs to know more information, 
in three minutes, you should be able to accomplish your goal. You should be able to, uh, you know, determine whether that person is a supporter or not supporter or needs more information about your candidate. And you should be able to lay that hook in their mouth to get them, you know, checking out your candidate's website, calling the office, or getting their information so you can follow up on them. Uh, some other quick things I always tell them are, you know, always step back when you're knocking on a door. You don't want to be intrusive. Uh, you know, never go inside. And, and there are the rare scenarios, like Sean mentioned, you know, when that person seemed friendly, uh, not dangerous, although I would never tell my volunteers that. But, you know, if you know the person, go inside, talk to them for a minute. Um, you know, there are just so many little things that when you're running a field program, four months, you got to imagine, if you're doing things that shave off seconds or even minutes every time, think of how many doors, how many more people you'll be able to talk to at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. That's a really good tip. That's right. So it is very much about efficiency. It absolutely is. When you're thinking about hitting 5,000 doors or 50,000 doors, you bump up your efficiency by cutting out, you know, a minute at each door or five minutes getting to your turf, whether that means a good map for your canvassers or, uh, you know, telling them they only have three minutes per door, it all adds up tremendously. Great. Any uh, closing words of wisdom you'd like to leave us with? Well, you know, it's not always fun to go knock but it is always the most efficient way to do it. Um, you tend to get people at the door more often than on the phone, and it really is just one of the most effective and efficient things you can do in a campaign. So don't ever be afraid to ask questions uh, to other people who have done it before, and um, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Dave. As always, appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to talk with us. Have a Thanks good week. Me, Ron. I always appreciate it. Thanks so much. You too. My pleasure.